Okay, I just got out of Spider-Man Homecoming and it's by far the best Spider-Man film to date. It bypasses the origin story and gives us an authentic Peter Parker who is in high school and has high school problems and is trying to balance his superhero life with his academic life, which doesn't seem to work out for him, but that's part of the character of Spider-Man. There is also, I have, to, I have to say off the bat, that I was rather skeptical of seeing another Spider-Man film, especially how Amazing Spider-Man 2 kind of came off as a jump a gigantic clusterfuck and to see this film more grounded and down to earth within the within the Marvel MCU really brings out how Peter Parker should act I should say for the record that I think this is probably the best Peter Parker out of all three renditions of Spider-Man. Saying like, they always get something right, but at the same time, there's always something wrong. Tobey Maguire, there's, he gets Peter Parker right in his awkward nerdiness, but gets Spider-Man wrong because he's not really as a wisecrack, he's not really that much of a wisecracker. He just kind of reacts to the situations around him as Peter Parker pretending to be Spider-Man, kind of, in a way. The second rendition with Andrew Garfield, Peter Parker is such a nerd, that, and such an overachiever, that you really cannot relate to the guy. Because there's no real struggle with him. He's not really going through any high school problems. There's no... He's not really a kid anymore. He's just, he has adult problems. He's dealing with the loss of his parents, who may or may not be dead. All of his um his job and whatnot. But they got in that rendition. They got Spider Man right with the wisecracking. He just feels like he's above everyone else in terms of the crime fighting team, and it stays true to that. In that aspect. Peter Parker, well, there was too much going on with the subplots and whatnot that would probably be never be resolved. Hence why I think they got Peter Parker wrong in that aspect. Now with this one, he is still a kid. He's still going through high school and he still has those problems. And like you see in the trailer, he's like his best friend's like, we can have a Spanish quiz. It's like you don't think about that unless you really have a academic problems and he does Peter Parker in this film does have his fair share of academic problems he near faces he faces near expulsion for his like tardiness and lack of dedication to his school and whatnot but that's neither here nor there he I mean he's trying to do his best speaking about that I feel that Tony Stark's inclusion in this film was interesting. I really dug Tony Stark in this film. It not in the mention not because like he like his his role was extremely low key. He was only featured in like a dozen scenes at best, but his role is pivotal. But not only that, I also feel that because this exists in the MCU, I feel that there's like a lot of the dialogue that Tony is tapping into, and a lot of his, and a lot of his um, dialogue, it's post Iron Man three is taking a lot from that film, when he was dealing with PTSD with the kid, and him trying to solve how to get power to his suit in a very low tech setting without any resources. Hand at his disposal, yeah. I th I'd say that he's taking a lot of lot of his um, inspiration to how to guide Peter from that experience, and it's interesting to see how he developed that 
that position that he put himself in. It's really cool. Um, but there's a there is some things that are have to be discussed, and that probably the probably the biggest thing I have to discuss is the villain. Michael Keaton does a fantastic job portraying the best Marvel villain we've ever seen. Because a hundred percent off the bat, it presents a man down on his luck by the big corporations, and he just wants to make a living. He just wants to make ends meet. He's not a bad guy. Or he tries his best not to be a bad guy. And he's only doing criminal activities just to make, just to put a roof over his head. And honestly, there's a point where you can just sympathize with the guy because you understand deep down what he's doing is for the betterment of his family. And for the benefit of his like his employees that he has his for his crew essentially and a lot of that really stems from their sense of responsibility because he understands he understands 100% what he's doing is inc what he's doing is just wrong and two there's always a sense of morality with him he like he's not willing to cross that boundary there's a moment in the film where he just, I'm thinking, I'm going to call it spoilers because I'm going to just discuss some specifics. Um, so from here on out, spoiler alert. Um, towards like early on in the film, when Spider-Man tracks down the alien arms deal that they do, and the guy is using a Chintari weapons to really fuck up, like, crime and queens. And out of mistake, he just straight up kills a dude. And he he's like, whatever, just brushes it off. It's like, I made a mistake, oops. But the guy really was going to screw me over, so yeah, he's going to be dead. And as a result, everyone's kind of terrified of him now because yeah, I think that was like the first person he's ever killed. There is some... There is... That... Michael Keaton's character could have gone in a very drastic route. He could have been a very stock villain, but instead they made him very sympathetic, where you can definitely see the, the turmoil that he's in. And that turmoil really transitions into Spider-Man's, like, love life, really. Spider-Man's love life is ultimately... This ties into Spider-Man's love life because it goes into complete crisis mode when when he finds out that Liz, the guy, the girl that he's crushing on, and has a has also looks up to Spider-Man, is Vulture's daughter, and this presents a fantastic moral quandary on Peter Parker's part because he really wants to get in the good graces of Liz, but if by putting Vulture his her, his girlfriend's father behind bars is not going to bode well for that. And it's not really fully explored how Liz feels that Spider-Man put her father behind bars, but it's kind of hinted that there's might she might have some there might be some animosity between their ruining her perfect family life and the fact that she has to move at the end of the film just to get away from the the trial and the 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 grief they have going through um, her father being in jail and being this alien arms dealer it's It's interesting to see where he goes with that because he Peter really takes really steps up and becomes a really mature towards the entire film, including in the trailers. He wants to be this Avenger that he wants to be an Avenger, often calling like calling into Happy, who's played by again by John Favreau, annoying him to such an extent where he gets ignored. He really takes the. Um, he really takes it to the. 
a very, very mature route. Whereas towards the end of the film, because of what he's gone through, he'd rather not be an Avenger. He'd rather help the guys on the ground. And he'll call up, and Tony will call upon him if needed, because sort of their that's their mutual relationship. I'm surprised that um you do see another Spider-Man suit towards at the end of the film, and it's very that's a it leads to one of the the film's funniest gags. Uh, not so fun, not so much as funny as the post credit scene, but I'll get to that later. I really think that this film sets the bar for other Spider-Man films. Spider-Man Two is by far highly regarded as one of the best Spider-Man films because of Doc Ock and how he is also a sympathetic villain. But they offer very much different in Homecoming because you really get to understand Peter a bit more from a high schooler's perspective. Him dealing with high school problems is also interesting. But, you know, this is a take of Peter Parker that I can really take away from. A lot of people can resonate with it, but it, it, then again it might fall flat for some people because again again it's one of those stories where it, it may come off as like incomplete because of how every how the uh, it was marketed before and now how it will be presented and how it how they fear it will be presented because I had that kind of skepticism going in. But I feel that those people that kind of that subsection, that subsect the words will definitely be pacified for the time being until Spider Man the Spider Man sequel which set to release in like two years from now. My camera jipped out when I was trying to record this, so I'm gonna have to say this now. Spider-Man: Homecoming is by far the best Spider-Man film we've been getting, we've gotten ever. Tom Holland killed it as Spider-Man. He's the best of both worlds both as a nerd and who's trying to achieve popularity in high school and as a superhero. There is a lot of comedy in there that is prime for exploration and there's a lot of room for growth for his character, especially later on. Michael Keaton is an amazing villain, probably the best villain in the Marvel MCU so far, aside from Wilson Fisk, but he doesn't really count because he's in the Netflix series. But um, he's a sympathetic villain and one that Marvel really sorely needed to balance out the apocalyptic nature of all the other villains in Marvel's past. It's a breath of fresh air to see a villain who's not necessarily evil by trade or has any evil nefarious goals. He just wants to provide for his family through a very shady and underground way. That's a very different approach, but also very fitting for Spider-Man. Um, congratulations to John Watts and his Marvel Cinematic Universe debut for, give, for proving me wrong and providing a very quality Spider-Man film. And one I do hope that he sticks on for all other subsequent Spider-Man sequels going forward to achieve that Hogwarts-style vision that he's been talking about. And I do hope that to see that vision somewhere down the line. Anyway, that's my review for Spider-Man Homecoming. Stay tuned for the update video, the addendum, and my anime influence metal video. So until then, I'll see you guys when those videos drop.